Good afternoon, committee members. We are waiting um, to get a quorum established here. We're almost there. So Chair Cisco, it looks like we have a quorum now. Um, so whenever you're ready to start, um, we can. You want me to go ahead and call to order before we take Spanish translation? Yes, our host will um, make the announcement. Sandy, will you please make the announcement? Yes, thank you. For those just joining the meeting, live translation in Spanish is available and members wishing to listen in Spanish can join the Spanish channel. To do so, click on the interpretation icon in the Zoom toolbar. It looks like a globe. Once you join the Spanish channel, we recommend you shut off the main audio so you only hear the Spanish translation. Um, Pablo, will you please restate this in Spanish? Los que recién se unen a la reunión, interpretación en vivo al español está disponible y los miembros que deseen escuchar en español pueden unirse al canal. Para unirse, haga clic en el icono de interpretación en la barra de herramientas de Zoom, que ahora aparece un globo terráqueo. Una vez se una al canal de español, se recomienda que apague el audio primario para que solo escuche la interpretación al español. Thank you, um, Pablo. I'm going to put you into the Spanish channel while we uh, wait for Charles. Would you like me to do roll call now? Um, Chair Cisco. Sure, that's that's what we want to do. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and order tonight's meeting of the Charter Review uh, Committee and ask for roll call, please. Chair Cisco. Yes. 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 Chair Cisco. Y
Thank you. Committee member Weeks. Here. Committee member Villalobos. Committee member Walsh. Committee member Walsh. Um, we can't hear you. I can see you, but I can't hear you. So I'll come back to you. Committee member Badenford. Here. Committee member Pitts. Committee member Oliveras. Here. Committee member Minor. Committee member Miller. Committee member Mazia. Committee member Mazia. I'll come back to you. Committee member Martinez. Present. Thank you. Committee member Ling. Committee member Close. Committee member Gudinho. Committee member Diaz. Committee member Cunningham. Committee member Condren. Here. Committee member Byrne. Present. Thank you. Committee member Bartley. Here. Committee member Barber. Committee member Arizon. And Chair Cisco. Here. Okay, let me go back. Committee member Villalobos, I don't think we'll be attending today. Committee member Pitts, have you joined us? I am here. Thank you. Committee member Minor, have you joined us? Committee member Miller, have you joined us? Committee member Mazia, have you joined us? Okay, he's raising his hand. Let me see if he needs to be unmuted. Okay. He's on the call, I see him. So, okay, committee member Ling, have you joined us? Committee member Close, have you joined us? Committee member Gudinho, have you joined us? Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Committee member Diaz, have you joined us? Committee member Cunningham, have you joined us? Committee member Barber, have you joined us? Committee member Arizon, have you joined us? Okay, let the record show that all committee members are present with the exception of committee member Arizon, committee member Barber, committee member Cunningham, committee member Diaz, committee member Close, committee member Ling, committee member Miller, Committee member Minor and committee member Villalobos. So um, just a couple of housekeeping rules that we go over at each meeting. Um, I just wanna remind committee members to please keep your audio muted until you um, need to speak this um, helps with any feedback during presentations. And also as members of the public um, join the meeting via Zoom, you'll be participating as an attendee. Your microphone and camera will be muted. If you're calling from a telephone and choose to speak during public comments portions of today's agenda, for privacy concerns, the host will be renaming your viewable phone number 
to resident and the last four numbers of your phone number. The City of Santa Rosa is committed to creating a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption. We will not tolerate any hateful speech or actions and are well staffed to monitor that everyone is participating respectfully or they will be removed. If necessary, we will also immediately end the meeting. Public comments will be heard after each agenda item is presented. And after each agenda item is presented, Chair Cisco will ask for committee member comments and then open it up for public comment. If you are participating from Zoom or by telephone and you wish to make a live public comment on a specific item, at the time public comment is opened by the chair for that item, please use the raised hand feature. If you are calling via telephone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. Throughout today's agenda, when Chair Cisco calls for public comment, an interpreter will be prepared to assist anyone needing translation services. Those using interpreter support will be afforded additional time for your public comment as required by the Brown Act. We ask that those listening on the Spanish channel but wishing to make a public comment to turn off the interpretation channel entirely at the time you hear your name called. So you can join the main channel to make your public comment heard and translate it into English. This icon may now look like a circle with an ES in the middle and the word Spanish underneath. You can then rejoin the Spanish channel at the conclusion of your comment and continue listening to the meeting in Spanish. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Williams. And uh, with that, we're going to move on to uh, public comments on non-agenda matters, which is the time for any member of the public to address the committee on uh, matters pertinent to the committee's business. Um, if you wish to uh, participate by Zoom, use the raise hand feature. Um, if you're calling in, uh, dial star nine, and I uh, believe you get three minutes, and I'm going to ask the host to let us know if there are any people wishing to speak under public comment. Chair Cisco, I'm not seeing any hands raised. Okay, great. Thank you. So with that, we will close public comments and move on. We have no minutes to approve. So we're gonna go right to our schedule items. And our first item is our equity principles item. And I believe staff, the Coral Shields will be giving the staff presentation on that. Hi, and good evening, everyone. Thank you uh, for your time this evening, and thank you for your dedication to our city and this very important work. I'd like to really begin this meeting by giving just a moment of appreciation to Vince Harper, who we lost yesterday. He's a strong, was a strong community pillar. I know he's resting in power, and his life, life's work was around issues of equity. And so I find it very fitting to acknowledge him before we begin. So next slide, please. So there are a couple outcomes for this presentation for you tonight um, from your request at the last meeting. We're just gonna, I wanna like give you a view into what the city is doing and the path the city is on in terms of this equity journey, only so you understand the context of this charter review committee as well. Ideally, in ideal times, we would be done with the work, but we'll be doing this together, uh, which the universe gives us what it gives us. We're gonna share with you some initial definitions. So we're all using the same terms and language. Really wanna lift up some of the differences between the D, the I, the E, and introduce you to the concept of belonging and uh, show you where we've been doing so far and then uh, end with what the most important part, really the considerations this group should take into account as you develop your equity principles. There is an example in your packet, of course, of what the county did. And I know members on this um, committee were actually part of that. So you can hear those examples, but I kind of wanna give you the city context as we move forward. Next slide, please. 
So many of you may know this, but the city has been on a DEI journey, if you would. And in December of last year, the city hired an equity consultant, the Seed Collaborative. And you can find more information <laughs> about them on the webpage that's listed. The city does have an equity website as well that will tell you more about this. But from that selection process, there was a company selected, the Seed Collaborative, that would help the city produce three plans, an equity plan for the city in total, and then also kind of a sub plan for fire, for diversity, and police for community policing and equity and policing. At the same time, the city also hired this position, my position as diversity inclusion and equal opportunity officer, equal employment officer. This is an inaugural position for the city. It didn't exist before. And so this is kind of the snowballing of the equity process here in the city. Next, please. So the, we are going through different phases with the consultant. We went through a due diligence phase. We went through a forming of these committees. Now we're really, literally today, we had our first meeting. We're beginning this work and we'll be producing ideally by this summer, a plan that will go before council of the ideas that the city thinks are necessary to achieve these goals. So this is just a little bit of the details. Again, a reminder, there are three kind of plans in total but we are looking forward to bringing something forward to council, hopefully by the summertime, earlier if possible. Next. So again, this is just a start of understanding the differences between diversity, inclusion and belonging and equity. And the city has a slightly different frame than the county. And so I, do, I will be lifting that up as well. And so pardon me if you already know these definitions, but again, just to create a level playing field for all of us, diversity is just the range of differences, right? Some inherent, some acquired, some about our skin color or our gender, other about our life experiences, but it is the intentional act of kind of creating a space where there is all of this difference, whether it's opinions, viewpoints, lived experiences, uh, whether you're a veteran or not, uh, all of those are, are taken into consideration in this broad definition of de um, diversity. Thank you. The next is an inclusion and belonging. So some of you may have heard kind of the metaphor about being invited to the table, right? And so diversity is having different people at the table. Inclusion is being invited. It's being brought in as part of whatever is happening. Belonging is additionally the inclusion of co-creation, right? A sharing of power, a shifting of who's making the decision. So in inclusion, there's set forms, whatever's happening is happening, and many different people are invited to come along. In belonging, it's now a culture where all of these people have part of a say in what's being created and how it's being created. The last one is equity, which is probably the squishiest one, the hardest one to reckon with because it, it morphs in terms of how you achieve it at times. I think one of the most important things to recognize first is that it is both a process and an outcome. So you find equity throughout. It is not a one-time thing. It is not a check of the box. It really is about kind of embed, being embedded throughout what's going on. But it is about addressing issues of fairness and justice. It's about looking at systems and the change necessary so that outcomes across the board for whichever type of group are all um, prosperous and thriving. The I, the, I, want, I do want to bring, uh, the county definition is there for a reference. We are creating kind of a normative culture in our region, which is beautiful, where we are all kind of having these similar conversations. So I do want you to understand kind of, uh, again, the harmony around all of this and the different terms used. Are there any questions so far? Um, right. Oh, go. So Carol, if, if you wouldn't mind doing the whole presentation and then we can do questions after so we're not going back and forth, I would appreciate that. 
Sure. I just don't want to get too far along and someone be, have been lost very early. So next slide, please. Appreciate that, but I, I think it'll go better if we just do it this way. So this is one of the key differences between the city and the county kind of frame. The city in choosing the seed collaborative has chosen a lens of targeted universalism. And this really is about creating conditions that we want everyone to achieve and then recognizing as different groups have different opportunity and are placed closer or further from those success metrics that we have targeted strategies to meet their needs. So this includes racial equity, but it's not limited to racial equity. So anybody not achieving whatever that stated goal is, so you could use COVID vaccination experiences, anybody not meeting that group, creating targeted solutions that meet the needs of those groups to get them to the universal goal that we've all identified. So again, they're harmonious, but slightly different. They both look at data. They both recognize the historical harm of race and ethnicity, language access, all of those things in our, in our country and in our region, both historical and current. But they, it's a slightly broader frame about bridging and belonging that is embedded in the targeted universalism. Next slide, please. This is just another way of thinking, again, about these early fundamental definitions. Like diversity, we're thinking a lot about our workforce. We're thinking a lot about our community. Who are the people? And, and how do we ensure that it's varied in all from age, just like this group, from age to experiences, gender, ethnicity, all of those, seen and unseen. Equity really is about decision making. Are we thinking about who has been harmed, who is not at the table, who will carry the greatest burden? Are we creating specific strategies that address that in our policy, in our practices, in our investments? Inclusion is making people uh, feel included, are at the table, as I said earlier, have been invited to dance. Belonging is a sharing of power and co-creating together. So it's, it's inclusion plus. It's more than simply just being at the table. It's being allowed to change what the table was brought there to do. If you're sitting at the table, all of those things. Next, please. So the city has been engaged in like the hard conversation is around what does this mean? Very similar to the county. The city has begun engaging in the American Rescue Plan Act, or ARPA, as you might hear it called, where these investment dollars are going to go. You might have read about it this morning in the paper or in past articles in the paper, whether about the county or city. So as we talked about this, the city created a, almost like a rubric document that gave all of these ideas. There were lots of ideas that came in, lots of people asking for ways to think about spending the money. And how we narrowed down and prioritized that was thinking about the terms you're, you'll see on your left. What, how does this contribute to environmental equity? How is this upstream and thinking about socioeconomics of our community? Does this advance inclusion? Does this advance equity? So you'll see that the city began, has begun to struggle with what does that look like in action? Next, please. We're also evolving, language evolves and changes over time. So while our ARPA discussions will be framed around the last document you saw, we have begun talking about potentially, this has been brought before the Economic Development Subcommittee, ways to think about equity as the large frame and these pillars of climate justice, economic justice, social justice, and internally procedural justice. Like, are we doing things that reinforce all of these goals that we have? Next, please. But this is a work in progress, drafts, like we are just beginning this journey. So for you all, as you think about what does equity mean to you, I offer you these questions. How will you make decisions? Is this consensus? Is it majority? Have you thought about that? Because these are gonna 
these are going to be very interesting topics and this is a very rich room of ideas, thoughts and opinions. Because equity is both a process and an outcome, what will this mean for you? How will that be both in how you have your discussions and then in the recommendations you provide to council? Who will be monitoring amongst all of you where the discussion points are and the tension points are for, for these level of discussions so that things aren't missed, so that you catch the items you want to? And then of course, what type of support do you need? As, as Sue said very early on, the staff is here to help you be successful in all of this work. So naming the support you need is certainly um, your prerogative. Next, please. There are national organizations that frame equity work in the government. Uh, the county, I believe in November of last year, adopted a racial equity toolkit. It came from this website, the Government Alliance on Racial Equity. The city is also now a recent member. And in their toolkit that they have for government employees to think about and internalize and contextualize their work around equity. These are the questions they pose. They're, they're done differently. There are different types of forms and documents, but the, at its core, these are the questions that they have people go through as they're thinking about the types of decisions that you'll be making. So what is the proposal? Where did it come from? What are the outcomes? Do you have data? Do you know how this is affecting people either similarly or differently? How have you involved community? Who's burdened by what you're talking about? What are the remedies for that? Who isn't at the table? How does this contribute or mitigate racial inequity? And what are you doing proactively? Then of course, an implementation plan and accountability. How are you gonna communicate this out? How do you make this public? Again, this is the tool from GARE, as it's called. They've been around for five to 10 years. They have a membership of over 400 municipalities uh, and counties across the nation. Next, please. So, and if you haven't seen this visual, this is a, sometimes visuals work better than words. So, you know, the idea of, really understanding the difference between equity and equality. Equity, equality, let me start there, is everything's the same. Equity is understanding that you need to change things because people don't enter into this space with the same tools, resources, life experiences for many reasons, including the systems that serve them. And then liberation is ultimately removing all the barriers and giving everybody what they need for the goals they are trying to achieve. But really, this is my cipher question. Okay, thank you so much. Um, committee members, uh, do we have questions right now for Ms. Sicaro? And I, I just kind of want to set the table for what our task is tonight. Our task um, in, in, in this particular um, agenda item is to um, formulate what uh, kind of uh, lens we will be looking through, uh, what questions we'll be entertaining as part of that lens as we look through uh, the next agenda item of setting priorities or looking at any of the other uh, items that we might be considering for the charter. So what we're not doing is deciding what goes into the charter right now on this one. We're, we're, we're setting the table for how do we have this lens as we do our work. Um, and so uh, with that, any any questions uh, right now, Ms. Sakuro? And what I would ask you to do is to use the raise hand feature. I will notice you eventually. Please don't just shout out because then I can't tell <laughs> who's talking or what's going on. So um, if you wouldn't mind doing that, is uh, just do the raised hand feature, unmute, and uh, I'll call on you and ask your question. Any questions? Okay, uh, Ernesto. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so Coro, thank, thank you very much for this presentation. Very, very informative. 
And I, I applaud the efforts of the city to number one, bring you on board, but also to, to embark on this journey. I think uh, many, many communities are on this journey as well, besides uh, just the city and the city structure. I think our community is also on a path and a journey as well. And now here we are embarking on a journey too. Can you share with us a little bit more about, I know you've been doing some work, you're still in, in, in the process of doing work with our employees and different groups, but uh, what kind of discussions have been had so far, for example, with council, with other boards and commissions about how they can apply this to their, their own work? I actually, tomorrow morning, we can send out a list of the times and the places that this has come up so you can see the different types of discussions that have taken place. I will say the, the most applied that we've done are those ARPA discussions where we use like a rubric mm -hmm. to really talk about like, how are we going to narrow from this to this? And, mm -hmm. and yeah. still it's dicey, right? Still there's yeah. deep conversations to be had. It's not clear cut. I think to, um, for the city, different groups have had different conversations up until this point, And we are seeking to have a kind of a unified conversation on what this means and then what does it mean to us in our work and that is the hardest conversation not just about the theoretical yeah. but the application to the work so so this is so our, our discussion and our uh, uh inclusion of the principles here is kind of a, a new thing for boards and commissions it seems like right so it's just we're just starting so i think my point is that we are all on this learning journey too right we're all coming from different places in our lives different experiences uh of different understandings. Uh, so I think there's gonna be an opportunity for us to learn because we're gonna be talking about this as far as how it applies to the charter itself later on too. So right now it's how, how do we work with these principles in, in doing our work? So I think there's an opportunity here too for the community to see it, see it in action and how it's gonna happen. And it may not be perfect. I, I will admit that it may not be perfect. And, if, and I think we can all expect that, that because we are all learning. I don't think anybody is really that true expert in doing this, we're all learning. Uh, even those who are practicing it already and teaching it. So I, I think I want to start with those comments because I, I am excited about how we're going to be making this happen and having the opportunity to, to showcase some of the work that you've already done, the city has all, already done by how we implement it into this, uh, uh, into this committee work. So thank you. Well, and I want to thank all of you for recognizing this as a priority for this group in this work early on, like before you even start. Yeah. That is brilliant and bold and like you said i think where places are going uh karen weeks thank you Francisco. um socorro and i were both on the county redistricting commission um and we came up uh with equity principles and i pulled those out this afternoon uh to look at those in preparation for tonight and one of the things that really um, I think we can start with now um, is uh, the, the issue around norms that we established. Um, and that was uh, welcoming all comments and questions and providing a diverse array, array of channels through which the public can provide input. Um, and that is something that I think we can start at the very beginning. Um, before we get into, you know, how, how do we look at any changes or revisions we want to make to the charter through that lens? Um, just um, making sure that we have clear and open communication, that we don't talk in a lot of government speak, which I am probably more guilty than a lot of people of doing. Um, so please call me on that. Um, so those are some things. Um, that I think we can start with. And I don't know, Socorro, if you have anything you wanna to add to that based upon our, our mutual experience. We did in the documents, there is for everyone to view those equity principles, which were publicly shown at the county meetings, as well as some articles contributed. Again, right, elevating the fact that these conversations are taking place everywhere and simply kind of using what other people have done in your context may not be the best fit because you have a unique position you're in with unique content that will require you to figure it out as you go. But the agreements that Karen lifted, 
about kind of what how people will interact, the basic things you are accepting about our community and kind of how you will move through these, this decision-making process, this key vital decision-making process for the future of our community is really important. And if I may, Chair Cisco, I just wanted to um, emphasize as Ms. Shields uh, mentioned, um, that document from the redistricting commission uh, is, was included on the agenda, so it is accessible. Okay, great. Um, and any, uh, right now we're doing questions and then I'm gonna do public comment and then we're gonna have our discussion. So um, I have Mark Walsh. Thank, thank you very much, Chair Cisco. First, I just wanted to thank uh, um, the city's equity officer for the outstanding presentation. I loved it. And after you walked through some of those slides, I kept wanting to go back and to look more at them. You did a great job. Um, and I really appreciate the fact that you're talking about this as an evolutionary process. Um, and it's going to change as humans get better and uh, are able to enjoy each other's uh, gifts more. And I really like the uh, Government Alliance for Racial Equity slide. I think that's a fairly simple slide for most people to understand. And if we're working with a lot of inputs, um, some simplification may be better. Those are my only comments, and thank you very much. Thank you. Budino? Okay, I'm unmuted. Thank you. So, they're still getting used to Zoom. Um, so, I, my question is um, what strategies um, for, so in, the, in your experience in, in um, developing equity principles through the commission you participated in, um, Ms. Shields, what strategies were effective in developing them? Um, so that they were useful for that particular work. Um, and then what some of, what, what do you suggest some of those strategies could be for, for us in doing, you know, also um, collaborative work, but, you know, obviously different. Uh, I think the points that Commissioner Weeks brought up or committee person Weeks, I'm not sure, whatever this is, uh, that, that Karen brought up are key about just respect uh, amongst this group and lifting voices. There, This is diverse for a reason that was intentional. So really honoring people, everybody in this group and getting people to participate because seeing all perspectives is going to be critical. I think too, one of the evolutions that's happening and I appreciate that language um, place-based concerns, ARPA values, place-based recognition of the difference. So moving from the philosophical to literally seeing in our community how lives are different by things and decisions we have made over time and then what we want to do about it. And, and I, um, I will make sure to send the meeting. There was a study session on the 16th of this month. Um, I think Karen was there too, because it was with planning where the equity priority community maps were shared. And I think that everybody should deeply understand all the differences that are experienced in our community. And I think those maps create a visual database for you and we can always get you more data but about kind of issues of language, issues of access, issues of um, poverty, issues of missing or uh, different infrastructure availability. Um, all of that is important as you think about your decisions. And I think those tools should be recognized and used. Um, sorry, I have one more question. So um, do you have a suggestion, and this might fall within the equity principles, but do you have a suggestion for um, sort of um, the norm of matching that data that's available, how things really impact people's everyday lives as it relates to the topics that we will be discussing, right? So like when we talk about, for example, citywide mayor, mayoral elections, right? How do we know how this is going to affect people in the long run, you know, or how do we know how our current election system affects them? Like, anyway, just. Well, example. I think those are the questions to uplift. I think thinking about 
right? All of those are strategies to what? What is the goal you want? And are these the right strategies to get there? I think those are the types of discussions you have to be thinking about because these are a means to an end to a more just democracy in our own city. So I, I think that's the, the rich discussions you'll have that I will watch every time. Scott Bartley. Thank you, Chair Cisco. Um, and, and thank you, uh, Ms. Shields, for the, for the presentation. I think it was very informative. Um, a question for you, since you were on the redistricting, uh, as I'm saying, we've got, and Chair Cisco alluded to, we have two tasks here. We have the, we have the broader um, issue that will come in terms of how do we address any changes um, we propose to the charter and how we measure them in terms of social equity. But the immediate one is how do we create um, a document that guides us in that discussion? Because obviously with everybody doing the discussion right now, we don't have the luxury of time. I mean, we're extremely limited on what we can do and we could have a philosophical discussion that would take um, 10 months like the city is having, but then we would have no time to actually discuss the issues. So I guess my question is, how long did it take the committee, um, the county redistricting, to come up with this, this guiding principle document? Um, was, it, was it, you know, how was that created and how much time did it take? So the choice by that committee was made and you, this committee will have to make its own decisions and that's what you're brought here to do. But they, we had a subcommittee work on that and bring it back. And that happened twice. So there were two subcommittees, brought it back, brought it again, and then moved forward with it. Um, because we had actually a tighter time frame and a tighter crunch. So I think that's a decision for your group. I, of course, will support and facilitate whatever I can. But those are the types of difficult decisions you have to make about how you want to operate. OK. so. So again, going back to the redistricting, so you created this set of principles, but how did you proceed with your tasks? So I'm not quite sure I understand. You had a subcommittee doing the principles and they came back twice with them, but you were proceeding simultaneously with, um, proceeding with your process, I assume. And how do you proceed with the process without the principles in place beforehand? So what are you evaluating? What's your guidance in evaluating it? And, well, we and I understand yours is yours was sort of restricted because of the redistricting has a pretty tightly defined thing. We've got a pretty broad <laughs> scope, um, and I, I just I'm a little concerned that we'll 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 end up in a crunch at the end where we we miss things. So, so I, anyway. you've talked about some norms. If you had some values, I mean, because then everybody's starting from a shared place and then figured out whether you want to do it as a group as a whole, or I don't want to, you know, you'll figure that out. Then the principles, because, because we had spoken that we agreed, there was consensus, we will have equity principles. These are values we believe in. Like even as we were beginning, and, and honestly, in the early conversations, it's not as sharp, the issues aren't as sharp because it's really like, oh, we want to learn more. We want to know more. It's really not until something's in front of you that you're like, whoa, 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 as you've seen play out around the redistricting. So I think that, I think that the only thing to do is simultaneously because they have to have meaning to you. I could write up a draft, but they would be what I feel and what I know and not and part of this is about shared understanding. Again, so as this group makes incredibly different and difficult decisions complex, you're coming from the same space. I, I know that's not a cut and dry answer, and I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's no that's, silver bullet. Yeah, no, I, I, I hear you. Thank you. <laughs> For silver paintbrush, I mean, let's remove the violence, right? But I'm sorry. Um, Logan? Thanks, Patty. Thank you, Socorro. Um, it's really great to see this uh, getting integrated into the city's work. Um, is that the presentation that you're envisioning for other commissions and boards, what you just did for us? Well, you're the first one to request it. So I, it, I mean, I would, yes, I would love for this to be kind of something that commissions request or, 
or groups and we build this acknowledgement together. I think, I mean, in an ideal world where we are practicing equity daily as a community, yes, we would be making these norms and agreements and def common definitions together so that we're doing this together. Yes, absolutely. Although I would caveat asterisk, language does evolve. So perhaps a month ago, I wouldn't have included belonging, but now belonging is an important consideration, right? So, so I would absolutely recognize that this language around social justice, around all of these issues is evolving in beautiful ways that empower and create the opportunity for change and difference. Okay. I, one thing that I think would be helpful for me and maybe for some folks that also look like me is, is a definition of microaggressions. And I think that would be good probably in the inclusion section. Um, and I think especially on a committee like this where we're gonna be having a lot of crosstalk and things can move quickly. Um, so is that was sort of a, a, a quest leading to a question is, is are you going to be showing examples of norms if if that is the request of this group again staff is here to support your journey in making it the strongest most inclusive like all the things we want process i i am at i wouldn't say beck and call but i am at your service great good to know thank you for your service Anyone else have a question for Ms. Socorro right now? Um, I have a question, but I think it's more for, for you, um, Ms. Gallagher. What we're hearing is that um, this type of language or lens could evolve over time. How restricted are we, because I would really like us to come up with some uh, principles, norms, guiding principles, whatever, you know, we want to do as far as the, an initial lens, but are we, will we be restricted as we move along and maybe begin to think of others? Can we include them in that lens or do we, would that have to be another agenda item or how might that work if it would work at all? No, we can certainly, um, you can develop an initial set of principles um, and protocols, and that can evolve throughout the process. And I would anticipate it, that it would, will evolve throughout the process, particularly as we look at different issues that are on our, on our list of 12. Um, there, there'll be some, some shifts in that language. And again, as, as um, Shields mentioned too, this is all evolving around us. And so we'll want to be able to take advantage of that. Um, we could, I mean, a couple of different ways we could do it. I think probably the best and easiest is to just incorporate it into our discussions uh, each meeting with respect to whichever topics are on there. Um, but if it's the committee's preference, we could certainly have a standing item uh, that would be for refinement of the, of the principles. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Um, any other questions? One other, one other quick question, Patty. Yeah, for Sue. Is this a required presentation or training for a, a commission, Sue? It is not at this time, no. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other questions before I go to public comment? And then we'll have um, an opportunity to discuss everything. So. Uh, looks like Lisa Badenford has a question. Uh, thank you, Chair Cisco. Thank you, Socorro, so much for your presentation. It was um, very helpful. And I, I do also appreciate the city's kind of broader, more inclusive lens. Um, it, it, it's the first time locally I've, I've kind of heard that zoomed out uh, pretty far, which I appreciate quite a bit. My question um, is throughout the redistricting process, which I know is still continuing, and maybe this is also for committee member weeks as well. How did these equity principles end up serving you through that process? Were there some lessons learned? How did these did these end up end up working well as a practical document for you? Are there things that we can 
um, benefit from, from, from having essentially a base document to look at. I'll let Karen answer that first. Um, in one respect, it um, promoted more public uh, engagement um, than was previously planned by the county. Um, and, and that had to do with um, going out to different communities, um, going to where people were, instead of waiting for them to come to us at the meetings. We had very few people in attendance in the, at the meetings. So that was part of it. And then looking at the different neighborhoods together, uh, looking at neighborhoods that had been underserved um, in, in previous iterations of MAPS. So I don't know if that helps or not, Lisa, but is that, so Socorro, anything to add? I would say that at the most difficult times in our discussions where there was the most honest and authentic conversations, having that as our central kind of glue was critical. And it really did influence and impact the map that was presented to the county. It was without that, without the document, without the principles that we had all agreed to, we all like, you know, raised our hand and agreed. And that was important. Without that, we could, I, it would have been much harder to come to consensus. And we came to consensus. Everybody agreed on that map. Not everybody loved it. I mean, there's a, there is a continuum, but everybody agreed on that map. And we could not reach consensus on others because of those principles. So it, it's one of those things that when it's going good and it's light and it's like, hee hee, you might not think you need it, but when it came down to the most difficult part of the work we were assigned to do, it was critical to be able to make the types of decisions. If we wanted equity as an outcome, we kept going back to that. Doesn't make it easier though. And it didn't make the conversations any less deep and, and prolonged. And I don't want to say painful, but, but it wasn't easy. I will say it wasn't easy, but it was a beautiful experience in democracy. Yvette? You have um, a question? Yes, that was one of the things I wanted to also bring up in relation to everything that Santa Rosa is doing in relation to the DEI. And thank you, Sakura, for your presentation. I want to make sure as we're moving forward and we're doing this process in relation to our city council members, there are many members of our community that maybe down the line would like to run for city council. And so in order for them to do that, we need to have, again, bring in that equity lens, but then we also need to hear from our community members in this process and and we want to make sure that they're being highlighted and that they're they feel like they're a part of the process so for so many years we were not at the table and so as we're moving forward in this process i want to make sure that the people in the community has an opportunity to look at what we're doing and have a little bit of input to that because that will guide us and that would lead us into what we need, what kind of decisions we need to make. If we're not in the room, the, the policies and procedures may not always be effective. So moving forward, I, I do want to request making sure that people of the community may have some input in this process. I want to say to, uh, to um, kind of put an exclamation point next to Yvette's point, data it's important in an equity frame to recognize not only hard data, the quantitative data, but the qualitative data of lived experiences, which frequently is not captured by hard data, but is an important consideration about decisions being made and the impact of decisions. So however we, if, we're, if we agree, we need data, with an equity lens, you need all types of data and not just the easiest to get because sometimes that paints a narrative intentionally. Thank you. 
Any other questions before we go to public comment? Okay, I'm not seeing any. So um, with that, I'm gonna open it up to the public comment. Again, if you're uh, a member of the public joining by Zoom, if you'll use your raised hand feature, that will give the opportunity for the host to, to uh, call on you and have you unmute. If you're dialing in by phone, dial star nine. And uh, with that, I'm gonna ask our host to uh, let me know if there are any members of the public wishing to speak. Hi, Chair Cisco. I don't see any hands raised. Okay. So with that, we're going to come back to. to um, I'm I'm sorry. We did we do have a hand raised now. One moment, please. Do that. Good evening. My name is Gregory Farron. Um, I want to thank Sakaro for her presentation. It's uh, I'm a member of this of the county committee that's been wrestling with ARPA, and we've we've had almost two months of uh, deep immersion in the same kinds of thoughts and the same kinds of uh, um, decisions. Uh, I have to admit, when I first uh, started hearing your presentation, Sakaro, I thought, wait a minute, this is the city charter committee. Um, what are they going to be? Uh, why should they be thinking about the issues that you bring up? Uh, but as, as I heard your presentation and I heard the questions afterwards, it was very clear to me that if the city charter is how we run the city, it's our operating manual, and we haven't really thought about it in terms of who's involved in the operating and who's involved and how do we, how do we engage everyone in the process, then all of the issues you're bringing up um, have to be the base upon which you try to figure out how to change the charter. If all you're really trying to do is uh, twist a few things that we've been doing in, in the operating manual uh, because they're practically you know, difficult or it's a new idea and we're not basing it in why we're doing it and what we're trying to accomplish on a longer term, much like the general plan is you know, looking out further and trying to figure out what kind of a city we have, the, the charter review has to look out it, it, both into the future and into our hearts. It has to be looking at how we engage people. And that's not going to be done if all you're doing is taking a few ideas that people have picked around without this kind of background. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else, Ms. Bliss? Yes, I'm. Um, I'm going to promote. Or uh, looks like Annette Arnold. Okay. Hello. I don't know if this is the time to speak up for a specific request to be part of the program, but one thing I would like to see is that in future meetings we have a plan for people who work during the day to be able to be able to attend meetings. So maybe having a specific time frame on the agenda that has to be kept to so that people can leave work and attend a meeting and get back to work if that's what they need to do. I think that would make it a more inclusive process. And the other thing I think would be great to have is a neighborhood contact or representative for every single neighborhood in the in the city. That way nobody gets left out. You you know have somebody who represents everybody. That's all I'd like to say. Thank you. Thank you, Annette. Uh, Chair Cisco, I don't see any other hands raised. Okay, great, thanks. So um, with that, let's go back to the committee. And uh, ju just to address uh, Ms. Arnold's concern, uh, that was definitely a concern for both um, the city attorney and I was to set a time that uh, would enable people that work during the day to attend. That's why it's five to seven. Hopefully <laughs> it will end at seven. We might not get there tonight, um, but, but that was the, the framework and it will be every other week uh, on that, so. Okay, so with that, we're gonna go to um, our discussion. And again, let's 
uh, let's keep in mind uh, the, the questions that have been posed here. Um, what I'd like to end up with uh, tonight is at least um, an initial set of principles for our lens to begin um, understanding uh, through uh, Sue Gallagher that we will be able to allow that to evolve and add things. Uh, we need a starting point. Um, so uh, that's what we're going to be tackling here. And um, does mean I'm going to kind of put you on the spot here and see what you think, um, what you know, what what you make of what's uh, been presented and what kind of ideas you may have to sort of start the framework for that lens, if any. Yeah, thank you. Um, so as, as we were going through the presentation and the discussion, um, you know, I, I was thinking that it, we, we definitely um, might start the um, principles that the redistricting commission um, has and kind of um, workshop them to see, you know, how they work uh, for this group. Um, we may do that through, you know, with this larger group um, or we may want to consider um, creating a subcommittee. We may do both, like do a filtering through that of those principles and then, you know, take it and kind of do that work as we're also, um, you know, continuing on with the process of, of reviewing the charter. I'm not sure, you know, what, what others think about how we do this process. And of course, you know, the subcommittee would just kind of like take, maybe take back the broader, um, broader committee's suggestions and bring it back as, you know, an inclusive process for everyone to have a chance to weigh in. Okay. So start with the, uh, using the principles that the county came up with and, and then begin to rework them as necessary. Is that, that's what you're talking about? If, if others feel comfortable starting there, it might be a good place for us to start. Okay. Um, other, other comments uh, in response to that idea or add ideas? Ernesto? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I, I tend to agree with uh, Ms. Gudino on where we start. Uh, this is a very uh, clearly by what Socorro presented. This is a very complex issue, so it's going to be difficult to come up with something like immediately. Uh, and I agree that this needs to be an ongoing process. It's the old analogy of riding a bicycle while you while you build it, kind of a thing, right? We have to start someplace. Uh, and I agree with keeping this as a standing agenda item so that we can always check in every meeting. We're going to be able to check in on what needs to be tweaked. How are we doing with our DEI efforts? Because uh, again, it's going to be a complex thing, but it's also looking internally at us it, as individuals. Uh, you know, we all come from different backgrounds. Some of us have done this type of process before, some have not. And some may still not feel comfortable or even feel, uh, I would say, maybe even welcome to speak up. So how can we provide all of our committee members an opportunity to get more information if they, if they need it? Meaning, uh, are, are, there, are there things that they need to uh, feel more comfortable in participating and being open during these discussions, for example? Uh, and, and I would offer up Socorro as that point of contact, for example, if, if she can offer herself to, uh, to be able to provide more information to individuals if they're looking for more in learning about the uh, DEI process. Uh, so that's something that I would like to see. Um, because again, you know, we're, we're, we're building this in front of the world. Everybody's watching. It could, there could be 10 people out there watching. There could be a thousand. I don't know, right? So sometimes too, we have a tendency to be worried about making a mistake because here we are, we're in the public eye. So any, anything that we can do to make it easier for our committee members to, uh, to learn what they want uh, about this process. And again, as I said before, we're all starting at different places. Uh, so it's kind of, for me, it's what does it mean to me as an individual? How do I bring it together for the group? But I'd like the place to start with, uh, with what Jasmine mentioned. And again, we may not finish it today. There may be more things to add. But again, if, as long as we can do two parallel things and still addressing our work uh, of the committee, but still keeping an eye on the DEI and looking at what else we can add along the way. Great, thanks. Um, Mark? Yes, and I, I really appreciate the comments, both by uh, Jasmine and uh, and 
Ernesto, we need more people to participate in the process. Um, and I think one of the challenges we'll, we will have is, um, first is how, how do we put everything through an equity filter and then, and then what does that mean? Um, but another question, and I, I'd like maybe if the future city manager or, or a current city manager and um, the city attorney or, or you, we all look at this as how much scope can we put into the charter concerning equity and how much scope should we put in there? For instance, if, um, um, if, if we, we put something in, it's locked in. Are we locked in based on the language? Are we locked in? Are we not going to evolve for 10 years? What does that mean? And maybe there's a, a broad method that, that you know, kind, kind of keeps us safe. So, so one of the decisions will be how do we deal with the equity? And then as far as the, the county's input or the, what the county used for the redistricting, um, I don't know what that is yet. I just haven't seen that. And so if maybe somebody could send that to us and then we could decide, you know, does this work or not? And, and I'll just admit, and I appreciate, especially Ernesto saying, let's make it safe for everybody to participate. I don't really know how the county thinks they did or didn't affect it. So with redistricting, what did they try to do? Did they try to put everything that they thought was a marginalized community into one district? So they could, you know, always have somebody elected. So now that district is 24% um, minority population instead of 20, or maybe two different districts, if they each had 20%, would have substantial population that would affect the overall outcomes. So to normal citizens, we don't really know what it was that they were after and whether or not that results happened. Just, just putting it out there. I appreciate everybody's input. What I really think is great is listening to um, um, Scirocco Shields and member Week say, here's how we agreed to work together. And for instance, if we had a mentorship program so everybody could participate in a board and commission, I think that'd be great because I'm getting tired of, of doing it. <laughs> and uh, and uh, eventually would like somebody, you know, some other people come in. And it's real exciting for me to see new people participate in government. I think that's, uh, you know, that's one of the outcomes of this we could have is how do we get new people to participate in the decisions? You know, that's, that's my two cents. Thank you. Thanks for that, Mark, and, and hold some of those questions, because uh, right now we're just working on the lens as to <laughs> before we get to the discussion about the charter stuff, but um, all of those are, are good points. Um, Karen Weeks. Um, thank you, Chair Cisco. Um, I wanted to uh, mention and ask a question uh, probably to uh, Stephanie or Sandy around um, and this has to go back to Ms. Arnold's questions about um, providing comments. Um, so I know in the council items, you know, and then say planning commission, we have um, area where in questions can be emailed and also recorded. Um, public comments can be recorded and then played back. Is that the case with the charter with this committee? It, it is the case with email. Um, but we did not uh, set up a, a specific voicemail box for um, recorded voice messages, but a um, email address was set up for the charter review committee that um, people can send their emails to the committee as a whole. We also, I get that the city attorney's office gets that email and if they relate it to an, uh, an item on the agenda we certainly will upload that as correspondence just like we do for uh, city council great so there are um, opportunities for people to comment uh, on the work that we're going to be doing yes in addition to um, joining the meeting right. through zoom yes they can um, email public comment to the uh, charter review email address. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then um, I also, I, I don't wanna hijack this meeting around the redistricting commission, but <laughs> I probably shouldn't have even met, mentioned that at the beginning. Um, but if you look at what was provided, and I think it was in the packet that, um, that was sent to everybody, um, there is a list of norms. And I think that's a good starting place um, it talks about welcoming all comments and 
questions. I think I already mentioned a few of these. Um, and it's basically, when you look through that, it's how we are gonna interact with each other. And that might be a good place for us to start out. Um, and then if it is an item that's on the agenda every meeting, we can go to that and then start adding things um, as other things come up. Um, and it's, you know, um, making sure we have clear and open communication, that we have public input, that um, we do reach out in different ways to the community, whether that be through the City Connections newsletter, whether it be through um, the CAB, whether it be through other groups, um, so that uh, the public knows what's going on. Uh, so I don't know if that confuses things more or not, but those, that's my two cents for now. <laughs> um, is that the more you wanted to say? Yes, that is. Thank you. Okay. Yvette? Yes, um, I agree with Jasmine, starting with these basic norms and then working our way out. Um, there's no point in recreating uh, the wheel when a lot of the information that's on the, the slides we just seen, um, I'm in favor of a lot of that information. So working with that and then working our way out. Um, I did have a question about um, Q and A's. Sometimes when the public have Q and A's, there's a running document that is put sometimes on a website where they can see the answer. So is that something that can be available to people that submit questions via email or wherever it may be, where they can go to the website and just read through what people have asked? Because sometimes when we're in brainstorming mode, we don't always get to think, we think of things later. And then when we read through a document, sometimes we'll see that. And then as far as the redistricting, I mean, City of Santa Rosa will be going through that same process next year. So it's important that we have that discussion and delve into the equity lens in relation to redistricting and what that's gonna look like. So we, this is a living document that we're presenting here and that we're gonna be presenting back to our um, city council members. So that is important for us to um, you know, um, highlight that. And then more importantly, uh, as far as the communication, you know, someone stated, you know, let's put it on a website. Here in San, um, Santa Rosa, many people do not go to that website and, and get information from the website. So I'm highly recommending that there's some community outreach with either the community engagement office or people within this Zoom call to reach back to the community to get that information from the public. Because not everybody will click on an agenda, will go to a website. So we need that direct conversation listening session, we need to continue that process. And that's something that needs to be put into the document about being intentional with the work that we're doing. Thanks for that. Um, Scott, you had a comment? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to sort of chime in on um, Jasmine and, and Ernesto and Karen. I do think um, using the um, redistricting one as a template in terms of the norms is probably appropriate. I mean, we could we could spend, I'm concerned about the amount of time we'd spend creating this document before we got to the job we were at. And things like the norms make sense. I think the values that they express at the front and sort of the overarching vision is sort of a universal, you know, comment that we can all identify. And I would see, say the principles to, to um, Karen's point I think it should be on, I mean, every item we look at, all 10, 12 of them, this is a question. And I think we'll end up filling in the principles because each item has such a, it's a different set of parameters around paying the mayor, the salary for council members or these other topics. And that we'll, we'll visit that every time and fill this out. And so that I can see that when this is done, it sort of becomes the guide it, this it's sort of the defense of why we made all the recommendations we did. Um, but I think it's a good place to start. I don't think we need to go back and revisit everything again, because I think we'd end up pretty much in terms of the overarching vision and the norms in the same spot. Okay. Jasmine, you, you have more to say? Yeah, I just wanted to um, point where to where if people um, haven't accessed the um, 
Advisory Redistricting Committee principles. It's, I believe, the second um, attachment. If you open the committee um, agenda for today, um, it's a second attachment under the equity principles item 4.1. And for everybody watching at home as well, you can find it. Um, I also wanted to do just a time check. Um, is you know past the hour and we have another item so i'd like to propose that as you know um, others have mentioned we work off of the or we don't necessarily review all e each principle but we set set this at a starting point and perhaps start a subcommittee so um because i do think that since the city um does have an extra element of belonging um that you know it'd be worth to at least take some time to review it um, and, and see if, um, you know, maybe a, bring a little bit of a finer tooth comb to it um, and have some time to like look at it and, and, and a thoughtful process of how um, we apply these principles to our work. Um, the principles of course of engaging with each other not necessarily like, you know, applying them at the subcommittee. Um, yeah, I'd like to propose that we consider um, starting a subcommittee so we can um, do the work of reviewing and um, have, you know, proposals to the committee um, during you know, our next meeting if it's gonna be a standing item. Um, one of the, the reasons why I really don't wanna do subcommittees is kind of in keeping with diversity, equity and inclusion so that we're all looking at it at the same time. But I'm wondering if you'd be willing to consider, if the committee would be willing to consider that again, in the interest of saving time, that we just accept um, that we'll start with the lens being this particular document, understanding and appreciating that, um, you know, we're gonna be reading material every couple of weeks that each committee member can begin to, to take a look at it themselves. And then we'll have it as a standing agenda item and, you know, revise it as we need to, um, as we move along, if, if that sounds okay to you, because I think it will be evolving and I, I think what I'm hearing from everybody is this is a good starting point, not reinventing the wheel for the lens. You know, that's that's different than than what we might be doing if we if we looked at it, you know, as a charter amendment. So, um, how how's the committee feeling about that? How are you feeling about that, Jasmine? That sounds good. That sounds good. Um, I think having it as a standing item gives us the opportunity to bring our own thoughts. You know, as to you know if there's any changes and, and also, you know, work together and new things will come up. So I think that's that's a good, um, happy medium. Great. Um, Mark, did you have something more to say? Your hand is still up. Yeah, just really quick. Thank you, Karen. I did see the document. I love it. And under the norms, it says humble and approach. So I missed it. Thanks for putting me on, on uh, back on track. And it's great. <laughs> uh, Christine. Um, I really, really appreciate everyone that presented also the discussion so far. I guess I would like to add that, um, or I guess I have a request, which is I, I personally am totally on board with this document. You know, I appreciate the values, the perspective and everything. And I also imagine that each of us has a slightly different perspective or interpretation of the values, the statements that are on there. So I guess what my request would be is either Sakura or maybe Karen to actually at some point in time, doesn't necessarily need to be now, but actually go over and explain. In fact, like kind of go over the definitions like you did previously, Socorro, so that we are all on the same page with how we are interpreting and also internalizing these diversity, equity, inclusion um, principles. Sure, if that's a common request, we can, we'll make that happen. Okay. Any other, discussion. So I think what I'm hearing, and um, we can raise our hands if, if, if anybody objects to it, but I think the committee is ready to just take, uh, take a look at this uh, county document and allow ourselves to let it evolve, bringing our own perspectives again to each, each thing. So anybody have any objection to that? Um, I, I I agree with um, Ms. Byrne. I think that's a great idea to have like a explanation and wondering if what people think about having um, uh, maybe either Corn or Socorro kind of go through them 
at our next meeting if it's going to be a standing item. Um, you know, not take too long on it, but just kind of an explanation or maybe through the first part of the document if, um, you know, however time allows for it. Well, I also think that, uh, Logan, you were asking for a definition of microaggression or some, some information about that. So that might be an opportunity for us to get that through Socorro as well, if, if she's willing to do that. Yeah, if just expand, expanding on, I'm thinking what would apply particularly to a committee like this using the DEI lens. And that was just the first thing that came to mind. Okay, great. And then, um, Sue, anything else before we end this item that you need or want to? No, I think, I think that's very helpful. And I, um, I, I'm very supportive of the, of the approach and of starting with the, the statement of principles from the, from the uh, redistricting committee and also very much appreciate if Socorro is available and willing uh, that she come back uh, next week to talk about the principles uh, and perhaps also a discussion of microaggressions. I um, think that both of those will be very important for us as we as we move forward. So appreciate the discussion very much and appreciate the presentation very much. Okay, so that concludes this item and we're gonna go ahead and move on to uh, 4.2, which is the summary of council topics. And I believe Sue Gallagher and Rob Jackson are going to be handling for us. Uh, yes, thanks. I'll go ahead and, and start and Rob, certainly feel free to jump in at any at any time. Um, and I know our, our time is limited. We do want to try to keep these meetings to uh, end at seven. So we'll see how, how quickly we can go through this and how far we get. Um, I do think that the, um, the discussion that we had just had was so important and um, really helpful. Also, Timing is great because this starts to lay some of the framework um, for uh, for this for this next discussion. So again, thank you uh, to Socorro and to the full committee for uh, for that discussion. So this uh, what we're going to do now is just to walk through. As you know, the council recommended twelve topics uh, for consideration um, by this committee, and so we're going to walk through. Um, walk through those topics uh, just to give a little more explanation of what they are um, and what our sense of council's direction. Uh, some you'll see that some are clearer than others. Um, and then hopefully we can begin the discussion as to how we're going to go about, how the committee is going to go about prioritizing. So next slide. Uh, Yes, the, 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 the council proposed 12 topics um, and they recognized and emphasized that these are 12 possible topics um, for the committee's consideration um, and that they are just recommendations um, and a caution um, and caution this was given by the council itself. Uh, pursuing all 12 items um, would be a tremendous amount of work. The council recognized that and they were also sensitive to the issue of voter fatigue. So um, really we're gonna be looking at how do we select and prioritize among these topics. Um, at their August 17th meeting, uh, the council had an extensive discussion as to the nature of the various topics. They walked through the 12 items and then had a very robust discussion. Um, uniformly, the council agreed that um, that items that would require a charter amendment should be at least looked at, at least considered by the committee. And then they had a, a, a fair amount of discussion as to whether items that might be done by ordinance or resolution. Um, some council members suggested that those be taken off the list. Other council members wanted them on. Some council members suggested um, that in some, some of those uh, areas, for example, in climate change, um, uh, that it might just be a, a statement of value and principles that gets incorporated into the, um, uh, in, into the charter. Uh, at the end of the discussion though, they did leave all 12 items intact and uh, left uh, to this committee the task of evaluating uh, all of those items. Uh, again, caution, um, 
we'll, we have a limited time, we have limited resources, uh, and we have a limited um, capacity on the part of the voters. Um, we want to avoid voter fatigue. If we place 12 um, uh, charter amendments onto the, um, onto the ballot, that could doom, uh, doom all, all of them. So we wanna focus in on, on what's most important um, and uh, what could be most impactful. Um, and I appreciated one of the statements that Socorro uh, mentioned in her presentation is looking at items in terms of, so what's the goal? And is the charter amendment the right strategy? Are there other options? Uh, how do we best use our resources, the committee's resources, and also the, the, the community's resources? So After next seven slide. Four, no, probably. Yeah, no. Next slide. And Scott, I think you're not on mute. Ah, very good. Next slide. Thank you. Um, so I'm gonna walk through the 12 items. I'll try to do it um, quickly. I know our time is, uh, is short. Um, what in each of these, uh, I'll talk about what it is. What is the proposal? Um, I'll give any insight that I got from the, I did re-listen to the council's discussion from the, um, uh, from the August 17th meeting, uh, give any uh, head, you know, any indications that they gave. And then I'll also mention on each of these, is a charter amendment required for this item or might the item be done by ordinance or resolution? So a directly elected uh, at-large mayor, um, currently uh, the charter provides for the election of seven council members by citywide vote, uh, at-large council members. Uh, and then charter uh, section 15 currently provides that once seated, the charter selects one of its own to serve as mayor and one of its own to serve as vice mayor. So it's the council that is selecting the mayor and vice mayor. Uh, mayor serves a two year term, vice mayor one year term. Um, and next slide. So the charter says uh, we elect our council members at large, but in fact, we have moved to direct uh, to district-based elections. Uh, this was a result of litigation that was filed in 2017, um, and uh, that following year, after uh, we had re we had uh, regained our footing after the 2017 fires, um, the council evaluated the litigation. Uh, determined that state law uh, preempted the charter's provision for at-large council elections, and the council adopted an ordinance to establish the district-based elections. Um, the ordinance defined the seven uh, council districts that we now have. Uh, the process for the council's selection of the mayor and the vice mayor, however, that remained unchanged. Next slide. So at this point, we have seven district-based council members. Uh, and this proposal would shift the structure of the council to a six council members elected by district and one mayor elected citywide vote by a citywide vote. Uh, and this proposal would require a charter amendment. Next slide. We'll go to the next topic, which is ranked choice voting. So currently in each council district, each voter votes for one candidate and the candidate with the most win, most votes wins the council seat. With a ranked choice voting, each voter will rank the candidates in order of preference. If no one candidate receives a majority of the first choice of votes, then there's a process of elimination to, uh, is used to select the winner. Next slide. Uh, in, in my uh, review of uh, different jurisdictions um, that have adopted ranked choice voting, uh, the de details of the procedure does vary. Um, but the most common procedure is that if no candidate receives a majority of the first choice vote, then the candidate with the fewest number of first choice votes is eliminated. And the ballots uh, that for that eliminated candidate then shift to the second choice identified on those ballots. Next slide. 
And then that process continues until one candidate receives a majority of the votes cast. Um, there are a few cities, California cities with ranked choice voting include San Francisco, Oakland, Berkeley, and San Leandro. And then there are, I think, three or four other cities in Northern California that are intending to start ranked choice voting in 2022. And if we, uh, if the, if the uh, community wants to move to a ranked choice voting system, this proposal would require a charter amendment. Next slide. The third item is the police auditor or a citizen oversight commission. Um, an independent police auditor is a professional who provides independent oversight of police policies and practices. Um, the police auditor may review and investigate police operations, may observe and participate in disciplinary proceedings uh, and reports its findings to the city manager or to the council. Next slide. Citizen Oversight Com Commission is, is different. It's a commission of private citizens who perform the responsibilities comparable to the independent police auditor, but again, uh, it's, not a, uh, it's not necessarily a professional consultant. It's uh, citizens from the community that are reviewing uh, police uh, practices and procedures. The scope of responsibilities and powers of the independent auditor or the Citizen Oversight Commission varies significantly from jurisdiction jurisdiction to jurisdiction. Uh, next slide. And, and that variation, I mean, that's something that once we get into looking at this as a topic, we'll dive more deeply into what are variations that we've seen across different jurisdictions. Um, we'll bring that all to you. So the city currently has an independent police auditor position. Uh, position. The position had been vacant for several years, but actually the council adopted, uh, I'm sorry, the council appointed a new independent police auditor uh, last evening at its council meeting. Um, the city does not currently have a citizen oversight uh, commission um, as I think the, everyone on the committee knows the county does. Um, that's the ILRO. Uh, that was uh, put in place um, by a vote uh, last uh, year, 2020, in the 2020 election. Um, that oversight com commission uh, only oversees the work of the sheriff and does not oversee the work of the Santa Rosa Police Department. Uh, next slide. So the establishment of the, the police auditor uh, position does not require a charter amendment. In fact, uh, it's already in, in, in place by ordinance and by resolution, uh, we adopted the council appointed the um, police auditor uh, last evening. And the establishment of the Citizen Oversight Commission also does not require a charter amendment. It can be done also by ordinance uh, and uh, or or by resolution really would require an ordinance to establish that citizen oversight commission. Um, next slide. Should let me go back to the, the oversight commission uh, for just a minute, thank you. Um, and I'll, I'll mention here uh, as uh, uh, members of the committee may be aware uh, after the adoption uh, of uh, measure P and the um, placement of Iolero, the revisions to Iolero, uh, the county was sued, um, needing a meet and confer. The judge determined that there should have been a meet and confer with the police union before it was adopted. So it did have to uh, go through a process. Um, one of the advantage of doing it by ordinance is that those, uh, that the, the ordinance uh, can evolve over time. Once something is placed before the voters and placed in the, uh, in the charter itself, uh, it is uh, frozen in time until uh, a subsequent vote is taken. Um, there was in the discussion, in the council's discussion on the 17th, uh, a suggestion from at least uh, one council member, uh, if not more, is that you know, this might be an area that's appropriate for a statement of principle uh, in the charter with the details to be worked out by ordinance. Uh, next slide. Council compensation. Uh, Charter uh, section four currently allows for cart the council to establish their own compensation in accordance with formulas set forth in state law. The formulas are very 
uh, prescriptive. So for cities with population between 150 and 250,000 people, uh, state law allows council member salary of $800 per month. That is what our council members currently receive. Next slide. Uh, but state law does allow the city voters to approve a higher salary. And in fact, the voters have previously approved a higher salary for the mayor, currently receives 1200 per month. Next slide. State law also permits an annual uh, increase of 5%. Um, it's not compounded, it's just 5% each year. And the increase can be made by ordinance. Uh, it can be done each year annually. So you get a 40, the council members would receive a $40 increase each year, um, or it can be done periodically. So the example I gave is a $200 increase after five years. Uh, the council has not uh, taken advantage of that provision um, for uh, uh, many, many years. Um, so it's their compensation still remains at 800 and 1200 for the mayor. Next slide. To increase council compensation beyond the state formula, a charter member amendment will be required and state law does allow for a charter uh, to provide for uh, uh, additional compensation of whatever amount the, co the voters deem appropriate. Next slide. Climate change. Uh, climate change, very broad topic, obviously. Uh, the council did not provide detailed direction. Um, the definition of the proposal was left to this committee. Uh, there was some discussion again on August 17th of perhaps um, uh, it, it maybe maybe be most appropriate simply for a value statement. There were some council members that suggested uh, that it's um, not appropriate for uh, details are certainly not appropriate for a uh, charter, uh, given that um, you want to have flexibility. Climate change obviously is a very evolving situation, and to be able to respond quickly, um, that uh, ability to respond quickly. Uh, is, uh, is better set in an ordinance which can be changed by the council at any time. Next slide. The, um, the council did not though give uh, specifics other than suggesting that maybe it would be a, a general uh, value statement. Um, if it were gonna get into individual climate change policies, programs or initiatives, the council did not give us any uh, specific direction as to what those might be. Um, as I mentioned on the slide here, most of the climate change policies, programs and initiatives uh, to date have been done by ordinance, um, some by resolution, most primarily by ordinance. Um, and uh, there are a lot of efforts going on at the city um, in, on, in the climate change realm. Climate change is a tier one priority for the council. Next slide. Diversity, equity, and inclusion is similarly a very broad topic. The council did not provide detailed direction and left uh, the, um, um, the substance uh, of the proposal to this committee. Next slide. Um, diversity, equity, and inclusion is a little bit different in that there are charter provisions um, that at least to some extent attempt to address um, some of these issues. There's section 10 which is a task force to recommend approaches to greatly increase citizen and neighborhood participation and responsibility. Um, and section 10 uh, also establishes the community advisory board gap to provide representation by district. Next slide. Charter 11 directs the city to undertake, <clears throat> excuse me, all reasonable efforts to encourage participation by all citizens. I put that in quote because I know um, the references to citizens in both of these sections um, uh, will be troubling uh, to many people. Um, section 11 also directs the council to uh, undertake all reasonable efforts to ensure that its appointment to, appointments to boards, commissions, and committees reflect Santa Rosa's diversity, including geographic and ethnic diversity. Next slide. So if we want to see any revision or refinement to these provisions, that will require a charter amendment. Uh, other proposals could range from a general vision statement um, to individual uh, programs or initiatives or policies. 
uh, many of those programs, initiatives, or policies uh, could be and are uh, being adopted through ordinance or through resolution. Um, next slide. Next topic, the, this is topic seven, excise taxes. Excise taxes are taxes that are imposed at the time of manufacturing of a good or the rendering of a service uh, rather than at the time of sale. And so they are imposed on the manufacturer, on the service provider, and they're incorporated into the original price of the good or service. Next slide. Again, con contrast with sales tax imposed at the time of the sale and added onto the price of the good or service. Um, excise taxes are commonly used um, to provide revenues to address negative consequences of the good or service. This is, for example, the um, uh, gasoline and fuel taxes uh, used to help um, fund roads and road repairs. Um, and excise taxes are also often used to discourage uh, use of the good or service. For example, um, you know, an excise tax on sodas, on cigarettes, uh, and, and other similar products. Uh, next slide. Um, all new taxes, including excise taxes, do require voter approval. Um, the need for the charter amendment at this point is a little uncertain. Um, did, we did uh, a fair amount of research in trying to find um, whether, uh, given our general statement in our charter um, that state law will apply in the absence of something to the contrary in the charter, whether that gives the council the authority to adopt excise taxes, um, but we're still looking into that. So um, next slide. Regulation of rental housing. This is another broad topic. Again, one that the council did not provide detailed direction. Uh, and leaving uh, the, um, uh, the details uh, to this committee. Next slide. Again, uh, in the discussion on August 17th, there were suggestions that maybe this related to rent control or tenant protections, short-term rentals or other housing matters. And all of these issues, uh, none of them require a charter amendment and all can be addressed through ordinances. Next slide. Procurement policy, again, a broad topic. Again, council didn't provide detailed direction uh, and the definition uh, was left to this committee. Next slide. Again, a range of possibilities. It could be used to provide for procurement flexibility, could be used uh, to uh, include a provision for local preferences, project labor agreements, or to address other procurement issues. Most of these issues do not require a charter amendment, um, but can be done by ordinance. Um, the one exception is there are certain uh, elements of procurement flexibility that would require a charter amendment. Um, those are fairly technical provisions um, that, will, that could help us streamline our procurement, city procurement process, um, but you know, aren't particularly um, controversial when we get to, if we get to a deep dive on this uh, issue, we'll provide you all that detail. Um, that, those provisions to provide for procurement for flexibility, um, I would see those potentially being incorporated into an omnibus um, ballot measure. Next slide. Uh, again, that, that this, just what I explained. If we want to go beyond what state law requires, we'll need a charter amendment. Next slide. Board and commission quorums. Um, this item is um, to address the difficulty of ensuring quorums for various city boards and commissions. Um, the solution on this really is a little uncertain and options will need to explore those options. Um, solutions may or may not require a charter amendment. Um, our charter does not currently set forth what the quorums um, will be for boards and commissions, um, but relies on general, um, a general law that uh, it is a majority of the board or commission that constitutes a quorum. Next slide. Removal of a mayor or council member for misconduct um, uh, does require, would require a um, charter amendment. Under current law, no member of the council can be removed from the council except for by a vote of the uh, electorate. The mayor though, 
appointed by vote of the council currently and can be removed from the mayorship by a vote of the council. Serves at the pleasure of the council. Uh, if the council removes the mayor the, from the mayorship, the mayor loses that position but remains as a member of the council. Next slide. Uh, this proposal would, uh, would uh, provide for a charter amendment to allow the council to remove uh, one of its own members in the event of misconduct. Uh, it would require a due process um, uh, provisions uh, and some complications there, but it can be done by charter amendment. It would require a charter amendment. Next slide. Twelfth is the last item recommended by the council to your budget process. Uh, Charter Section 28 sets forth a pretty detailed process and schedule for the annual budget. Uh, council has suggested the committee consider whether a two-year budget cycle might be advantageous. Next slide. Um, and you could, the committee could consider whether to shift the city to a two-year budget cycle kind of permanently or could uh, propose an amendment to provide flexibility so that the city manager uh, or alternatively, the council itself could uh, propose a two-year budget. Uh, an allowance for a two-year budget would require a charter amendment given the details that are provided for the annual budget. Next slide. So this is the full list of, of uh, charter review topics. And if we go to the next slide, I've sorted them by uh, amendments that are where a charter amendment would be required and ones that might be able to be done by ordinance. Um, and again, I pulled this from after listening again to the um, council's August 17th meeting, um, a lot of the discussion was focused on what is what requires a charter amendment, what could be left to the council to undertake through ordinance. So the, um, I have Five items listed under the amendment is required, the direct elect mayor, ranked choice voting, council compensation, removal of the mayor or council member for misconduct, and the two-year budget. Under the ordinance, uh, the police auditor citizens oversight committee, the excise tax, again, I need to confirm that that can be done by ordinance, rental housing regulations, procurement reform, quorums, uh, climate change, and diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, the items that were mentioned by the council for possible, um, uh, um, you know, a value statement in the charter and details in an ordinance included the police auditor, citizen oversight commission, procurement reform, climate change, and diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, just some discussion um, that uh, by having a value or statement of value or principle in the charter would help to set that framework and emphasize the importance of these elements, uh, but would then um, allow, the, um, allow the council to address these issues in detail in an ordinance, allowing some flexibility for learning, allowing some flexibility for evolving circumstances. Um, so um, that was uh, kind of what what we heard from the council. Next slide is just for questions and discussions. So I don't know, I'll ask the chair if you'd like to leave um, that last slide up um, as we talk about priorities. And I, I realize I haven't left a lot of time for, for the discussion. I think it would be helpful to have that up. And so what we're looking for um, really is is for the committee to start talking about um, how to how it wants to start prioritizing um, whether it's wants to start narrowing down this list of 12 um, whether it wants to leave all 12 on the table but focus to start with on a few of the items open to whatever the uh, obviously open to whatever the committee would like to direct Okay, great. Thanks. And sorry for talking over you. Um, committee members, uh, this is just a time for questions. We'll do our discussion after um, I take public comments. So, uh, Logan, you have a question? Yeah. Uh, Sue, I don't see slide 37 in what was put on our agenda. 
Um, can you get that out to all the committee members or have the staff? Sure. Um, this last slide is not in our packet. It's in the packet. I have it. Right. Oh, okay. It was updated. If you have access to the website, but I can also just send it to the. I don't know if I've a. Okay. Group My server. mistake. That must have been an old agenda that I clicked on the link. Um, well, it was just updated today, so um, I will see if um, I can share this with the group. Um, I don't know if I, I don't have, Stephanie, do you have a, um, a group set up for a group email, a group e email? I do. Um, I, if you want, you want me to send this one slide? Uh, would you like the just this slide? There was only one other slide that was added, which was that first one. I can send the whole presentation to the committee. Okay, that would be great. Thank okay. you. Thank you. A few questions, Patty, and I promise these are questions, not leading questions. Um, <laughs> for what needs to go on the ballot, Sue, can you put if it requires a two-thirds voter majority or not? I think that'd be helpful for us. No. Yeah, none of these um, none of these would require a two thirds majority. All would be a simple majority, including the excise tax. Yes, because what you would be adopting is an authorization for excise tax. You would not be adopting an excise tax itself. Once an excise okay. tax was put on the ballot, yes, it would have to go by two thirds vote. Got it. That's helpful. Um, and if you could also keep us updated uh, on the council's work on any of these issues, I think that would be helpful. You know, if they're about to start on it in January, then we might not need to. Um, okay. That might make us more efficient. Uh, and then this is maybe a, a later question. So you can save this one if you, if you, if you need to. Is there any legal precedent that if something is passed via the council or via the voters that it's uh it can withstand a legal challenge so i'm thinking about what the the legal challenge to the iolero uh, issue at the county is there any difference there just wondering no the uh, any any amendment can be challenged um and what it'll be challenged against is against uh, state law um in general, state or federal law that would preempt okay. So Great, thank you. That's it, Patty. Uh, Brian? Yeah, one, one question, and maybe it gets to legalese and I don't need a long explanation, but I, I still don't totally understand how the council determined they could effectively change the charter and go to district elections. And so that leads me to ask, do we need to memorialize what they did with district elections through this process and essentially vote on what's already been done? And then if we do a direct elect mayor, it's gonna change it again. Um, so I don't know, it just feels like we're changing something that's not in the charter. Therefore, that shouldn't be in the charter either. I, I'm just, uh, I'm confused on the whole process. Sure, and I'll I'll, um, I'll I'll try to avoid the legalese, um, kind of inevitable a, a little bit. Um, we were we were um, challenged by by a lawsuit. Um, the uh, the Voting Rights Act, um, both federal and state, um, have certain requirements in terms of. Um, racial equity in, in establishment of districts or in, in voting. And uh, it was when we looked at it, we did some research and there were suggestions, there, there was evidence um, that, actually, let me take a step back. The idea um, on these lawsuits is that uh, if you have a majority white population and you have an at-large election, that majority white um, population will prevail uh, over uh, 
other groups consistently. And that is where you run afoul of the um, Voting Rights Act. We evaluated it and determined that the data was there to indicate that we had um, racial bias in our prior elections um, and that our at-large provision was then um, violated the Voting Rights Act and therefore could not continue to be implemented. Um, and it, again, that, it was a long, you know, there's a longer explanation uh, for that and I'm happy to provide it anytime, but I could do that offline. Um, so that was why we, the council determined to go forward um, with establishing the district-based elections. Um, so yes, we need to clean that element up um, by having a ballot um, measure that would provide for district elections. Um, I will note that the voters had voted that down in the past. Um, if it were voted down again, we would have some legal issues to address. Um, if at the same time there's a ballot measure to provide for a direct elect mayor uh, with a shift to six uh, district-based council members, uh, we can have both of those measures be on the ballot at the same time. And we would include a provision in each one that the ballot measure that received the most votes would be the one that would go into effect. So hopefully that answers answers your question. Pretty much, thank you. Thanks, Brian. Um, Karen, you have a question? Uh, yes, uh, thanks, Sue. Um, and I'm not sure if this is actually for Patty or for Sue, but um, at what point does the committee um, weigh in on some things that are currently in the charter that they would like changed? or that they think should be addressed, not that they personally would like change, but that they think should be addressed. Is would that be in a, in a future meeting or should I say it now or? Um, we can do that. Um, th this is really focused was just to help, help us start narrowing down on what the council recommended, okay. but I think you're exactly right. And that was uh, in my mind as well, of at what point do we take on additional items um, and we'll have to kind of re rearrange priorities again, um, both um, ideas from the committee itself, uh, if there are ideas that are floated uh, by members of the public that um, the committee finds interesting. Uh, and then also the council uh, urged us to reach out to um, staff, to unions, uh, to uh, um, others that work with the charter all the time uh, for their suggestions. So I already have some of those. Um, we'll, have a, we'll have a separate agenda item for uh, those that are coming from, from staff, so. And okay, thank you. Don? Yeah. I Karen sort of um, asked the question. I was just wondering how we work in. Obviously, there's going to be a whole series of cleanup um, things that have to come through. And in terms of how are we, how are you anticipating the timing for incorporating these things into into um, groupings that 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 we can do? You know, so some will have to stand alone. I assume some can be grouped together. I think you mentioned it, you know, that with the uh, direct elect mayor. Um, I'm just curious about the timing on that. I assume you're proceeding internally with a lot of the cleanup stuff. Uh, yes, um, and certainly when we when we uh, address the direct elect mayor, we'll also talk about um, the the cleanup that's needed. Um, in it, whether that passed or not, and whether or not you decide as a committee to move that proposal forward for the direct elect mayor. Um, yes, and in terms of how we move forward, um, 
will, um, yeah, some of the items, we'll have to look at how we agendize these items. Um, some can be grouped uh, in one agenda item. Some could be, you know, on maybe on one meeting, we can address several of them. Um, and uh, others will take probably, a, you know, a couple of meetings to get through, so. Um, thank you. Jasmine. Yes, thank you. Um, my question was, um, Ms. Gallagher, you mentioned at the end of the presentation um, a suggestion for having some of these be um, like value statements that would be incorporated into the charter and also provide the flexibility for the council to create ordinances around them. Um, I know one of them was climate change and then uh, DEI. And then what were the others that you um, mentioned that could be considered that way? Sure, and I, and I wanna emphasize that, that these were suggestions that came from council members. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I, I agree that, that allowing some to be done by ordinance gives that flexibility and that, that uh, ability to evolve, um, which I think is very important. Um, but I also wanna emphasize that, the, the, that, the, the, that members of the uh, council also were, um, were, were talking about this as well. So the areas were um, the police auditor, citizen oversight com committee, for example, you could have a, you could add a provision in the charter that there will be either, a, either and or an auditor or a oversight committee. Um, the climate change, diversity, equity, inclusion, although again, there's some language in the charter that we may still wanna be doing some, um, some changes to. Um, I think those are the primary ones. Um, the rental housing regulation could be one, but um, the, the council really is addressing many of those issues through ordinance already. So, um, so I'm not sure that that one was as strong. Again, there was not unanimity among the council members uh, on that approach, uh, but that was uh, echoed by a number of the council members. And then um, is there an established process for our committee to um, agendize um, at the very, you know, um, yeah, some of the, um, yeah, some of the items on the ones that are required um, for amendment or just any of the items, um, do, we, do we have a process established by the charter or? No, this is very open. Um, to the committee establishing its own process uh, and criteria for prioritizing or narrowing this list. Um, again, these are just recommendations from the uh, council for your consideration. Um, you could decide, um, you could decide you wanna look at all of them. You could decide you don't wanna look at any of them, that you have other options that you think are more important. Um, and, you know, or you can be selective. You can decide which ones you think are important uh, to move forward, which ones you want to spend um, time on as a committee. Um, so really the process of um, prioritization, the process of selections, uh, that is up, up to the committee. Thank you. And then I just had one last question um, in terms of um, agendizing, you know, I imagine we can do it several ways, you know, um, agendizing like all of our meetings or just a few of our meetings. But I do have a question for you. What would be helpful for staff in terms of helping us prepare for um, helping us prepare for the meeting to discuss each item? Like how far in advance would it be um, appropriate to agendize an item, you know? few meetings or what was what the optimal um, timeline of agendizing items? Sure, thank you. Um, the, the, we are moving forward on gathering uh, information and materials on, on uh, you know, at least a few of these um, items already. Um, we'll continue that process. Uh, it would be helpful for us to um, get a sense of which are your top priorities uh, because we will, uh, we will put our Initial, you know, our first uh, priority efforts into those. Um, we are trying to um, get materials out a week in advance. Um, the 
um, agenda is published the Wednesday uh, before the meeting. Um, and so those are pretty quick turnaround time for us. Um, once we know your priorities, um, we'll be reaching out. On most of these items, we'll be having speakers. We won't be the ones leading it. We'll be having speakers. Um, and so part of it will depend on when speakers are available. Um, but uh, we will start scheduling things out um, as soon as we know kind of where your, where your priorities are. Got it. Thank you. Danny? Thank you. Uh, you know, I'm looking at the, uh, the topics that are suggested by the council members, and I think they're doing a phenomenal job. And I think we definitely need to start um, with the council compensation um, for the time that they devote to the, to the community. I think they need to be compensated correctly. Um, but looking at it from a, for the community, I think that one of the things that are definitely are a hot subject, especially since yesterday during the council meeting, I know they discussed the police uh, uh, auditor or that they just uh, signed on. So I think that we need to start talking about the police auditor, citizens and uh, oversight committee, rental housing regulation, climate change as uh, the first top three that I see as something that we can start discussing to make an immediate impact towards our community. Um, especially for our BIPOC community who deals with some of these issues and lower income communities as well. Okay, um, hold those thoughts, Danny, for our discussion time. Um, any, uh, Lisa, do you have a question? You disappeared. It, there's a question and a comment in it, so I can wait, no problem. Okay, okay, great, thanks. Any other questions before I move to public comment? Okay, I'm not seeing any. So I'm gonna go ahead and move to public comment, which again is the time for uh, members of the public to comment on this particular item. If you're joined by Zoom, use your raise hand feature so that the host uh, can unmute you and allow you to speak. If you're calling in by phone, dial star nine and you'll have three minutes to speak. And I'm gonna ask our host if we have anybody wishing to speak. We do, um, uh, Joe. Lead them, let them. Um, I'm going to start the timer for you. Please go ahead. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you for letting me speak. Uh, I was the author of the memo that went out to all of you probably before this event. And as I look at your agenda, you've got a lot of things to cover. So I feel a little bit bad uh, mentioning that I'd like to propose you add another item. But I think it's so important that I do want to add it. And that is, I think for Santa Rosa, if it could become more of a democracy, I think that would serve as a foundation for everything else you're doing. And so what I'm proposing is you take a really good look at maybe trying to make that happen by looking at the, ref the rules for referendums and initiatives that are in place. Currently, it is very hard for people to execute a referendum or initiative because the signature requirements are so high. They're, they're very high compared to other countries that do this. If you lowered those requirements, you'd basically be empowering people to have more participation, which is really what the, is the inclusiveness you're looking for. So I'm proposing you maybe put that on the list of possible things to address. I know you've got a lot of things you're looking at, but there's another one. Uh, thank you for considering it. Thank you, Mr. Ledham. Anyone else? Um, Chair Cisco, I don't see any other public commenters' hands raised. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring it back to the committee. Um, and again, for us tonight to at least begin to, to do some prioritization so that staff can begin to um, uh, have speakers present for our meetings. So um, we heard some from Danny. And I'm gonna open that discussion up if somebody wants to make a suggestion or a comment as to their desire for prioritizing what we have in front of us. How about you, former Mayor Scott Bartley? <laughs> well, hey, thank you. I just, I just um, in the interest of giving staff some direction so they can come back to us at the next meeting and we can make progress, I, I would, I would, 
um, be supportive of starting with the co council compensation question. Um, I think in general, we should be focusing on first the items that require um, a charter amendment should be our priorities. Um, acknowledging that diversity, equity, inclusion is gonna be wrapped into everything we do on those. Um, I think those are, are the ones and, and whether we tackle all of them or not, um, I think a little, um, I think starting with those is a good, a good starting point. And the other ones, you know, if things can be done by ordinance, charter is not the place we want to memorialize things and it requires a vote of the people. We've seen that in, with the state constitution that that's problematic because there's always unintended consequences. Um, and council is capable of doing a lot of that. So I'd say start with those. I'd be happy to say start with council compensation as the first one. I think that's a good discussion and actually will tap in, I think, a lot into the diversity, equity, and inclusion question. Okay. Logan? Thanks, Patty. Um, I'm with Scott, but I think it's logical to start with what requires uh, a vote of uh, of the voters that can only be done via um, a ballot measure. I think that's just the efficient way to get some of these. And if none of us, if we can't find a majority to do any of those, then we move on. Um, so I think that that's efficient. And I think uh, my personal top priority would be directly elected mayor, although council pay is a, is a close second. Um, I think those are gonna be two I think those are gonna involve a lot of conversation. And then a third one that I think will take probably just a good amount of time to even understand and study is ranked choice voting. Um, so I would recommend that we, we do that early on to make sure we have the time as well. Um, I'll also suggest early on, just one other one real quick, Patty, is because it requires also the vote is uh, removal of council members, I think that's probably pretty pretty clear cut for a lot of folks. Um, so yeah, just again, the ones that require the ballot measures first. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Karen. Um, well, I think we should really focus on um, the amendment required list and not the option or ordinance list. Um, and that probably my top two um, would be council compensation and ranked choice voting. Okay, Jasmine. Uh, thank you. Um, I wanted to also, before I, I state what, what my preferences are, um, if we could have some time to explain um, what the difference is adopting something in the charter I mean, we may have done this in the beginning in the first meeting um but you know a lot of us have experience participating in government and some of us don't um so maybe an explanation of what the difference is between adopting something by ordinance and you know whether it's um voter passed or council passed and having something in the charter and why that matters um that'd be great i think and then um, my preferences for discussion also are those that require an amendment um which um, I think it'd be helpful maybe to start with three of them and agendize those and then take on three more. I don't know how the committee feels. Um, I think the um, uh, election of a mayor ranked a voice or ranked choice voting and then council compensation are, are major. And um, I think we should discuss those first. And then I also think that at some point, um, maybe combining a principal statement um, in the charter about climate change and DEI would be helpful in supporting, um, you know, not being specific enough to, to create um, legal problems per se or, or hurdles, but um, something that supports council members and implementing um, these in an ordinance in the future. Great, thanks. Uh, Dan. Yes, uh, I'd like, I agree with uh, Karen's comments. I think that the uh, five um, issues that require the uh, charter amendment uh, should should be our, our top priority and uh, to start with. And the two that I'm the most interested in would be uh, uh, council compensation and ranked choice voting. Thank you. 
Great, thank you. Um, Jen Close. Thanks, first of all, and apologies for being late. Um, I, I'm kind of a plus one to all this, so I'll try to be quick. I think focusing on the things that require um, charter amendment is important. Focusing on the ones that are complicated and might take some time, like ranked choice voting, um, the elected director, elected mayor, mayor, maybe, but, and I would say my number one priority is council compensation. Um, and, uh, and in terms of um, statements of values, I, I do think that that would be a, a good conversation to have once we're through those, but um, on those topics that are kind of broad values like climate change and DEI. So kind of plus one to everything that's been said. Mark? Thank you, Thank you very much. Um, I agree we should first focus on what requires charter amendment and um, what the topic that I'd want to focus on first would be council compensation. I think that has a lot to do with inclusion. Might hit those goals. Um, I'm, I would be skeptical of the, the item for removal of mayor or city council because we don't know what that means yet. And they may have that may have an opposite impact on inclusion goals. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Lisa, I thought I saw your hand up. Did, did you take it down? Oh, there you are. Okay. Yeah, Lisa. Uh, well, my uh, fellow committee members, um, I'm, I'm a plus one with, with all of them as well. Um, I guess my priorities would be um, around council compensation, potentially elected mayor. Um, but I just, uh, I wanted to also dovetail quickly, um, Logan brought up um, a good point. There are several of the, uh, especially the, the ones that just need an ordinance, where the council is either, you know, has been working on them, has proposals in front of them currently in the past couple of years and the next in the in the in the decisions coming in the next year. Um, so I think that it, I, as I try and think about how to decide what is a priority and how to decide what we focus on, um, you know, the charter is really about the bylaws of the city, right? The framework of good governments and how do we engage and how do we organize ourselves? And there's things in this list that are very clearly that, um, the things that also end up being uh, what's required by charter, the elected mayor. I think rank choice voting, I agree, is gonna be a hefty conversation. Same with two year budget cycle, removal of mayor. Uh, but those things, um, I, I guess the way I see it are very clearly in the bounds of what a city charter is. When we travel into ordinances and legislative decisions that then get ingrained into a 10-year charter it almost seems like a legislative function that 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 isn't quite seated for here and so i don't know how we kind of grapple with that but uh those are all my all my notes so i agree with 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 everyone else and i'm just trying to kind of figure out how do we think about this list i mean it's it's from A to Z, right? With everything of, of big things and little things and things that change the entire way that the city works to smaller things. How do we count a quorum and ensure that our boards and commissions can function? So thanks very much. And Danny, did you wanna say something more? No, I'm fine, thank you. Okay, okay. Um, anybody else? have a comment um so what what i think i'm hearing is that for the most I, excuse me uh, christine has her hand raised oh christine sorry, I'm sorry. Just... sure yeah i can keep it quick um i am very much on board with what many of you said and for me the priorities are um terms of conversation direct select mayor and ranked choice voting so and on on board with the process moving forward great So I think what I'm hearing is that for the most part, uh, the committees on board with um, our, our beginning list should go with the ones where an amendment is actually required. There's a lot of support for starting first with council compensation. Um, the rank choice voting is complicated. That may take some time. So, you know, I don't know if it's interchangeable in people's minds with dealing with the direct elected mayor or what, if we maybe need more time for that. Um, what do you think about that, Sue, in, in terms of 
staff and what, what's going to be required to give us those presentations. Uh, yes, and I, I appreciate that. And if I and I was hearing that same thing is that those three seem to be uh, the top uh, of many people's lists. Um, so what I would suggest is to let us um, focus on on these three to start and the order in which we bring them to you uh, may depend on you know how ready are we to put all the materials together and uh, how available are speakers um, obviously the first one whichever one we take first um, we're going to have to have those materials at least initially prepared by next Wednesday so it's a very short turnaround. Um, at least for this first meeting, um, I would ask your patience in that we will get as much material as we can to you the week in advance, uh, but understand that we may be in a similar situation where we're providing updated information uh, in a day or two before the meeting. So we'll do our best. As we move forward and have more lead time, um, we'll, we'll be able to be uh, a more comprehensive uh, in the week in advance, so. And, and it, it may take more than one meeting too. Yes, you know. yeah. many of these may take more than one meeting. Um, it, it, it may need some evolution. Um, and then to Jasmine's request, could we at our next meeting for you to do another um, sort of primer on what the differences are between the charter and the ordinances? Because I think, uh, that would just be helpful for us to really understand that and have that in mind um, as we work through this. Yeah, ha very happy to do that. So, okay. Um, I had a question, Patty, sort of a process question. Go ahead, Logan. If we're gonna, if we do decide to do resolutions like on, on climate change rather than uh, a ballot measure, well, let me ask two questions. If we do a resolution, Sue, is that also going to the ballot? Uh, anything the uh, any proposals that this committee has uh, will go to the council, and the council okay. will then decide what goes onto the ballot. So, um, okay, would we be? I guess this is up to them ultimately. The council would we be expected to write that resolution, or just say in principle what we'd want? No, we'll be writing the actual language, the actual proposed ballot language. Um, we'll we'll always um, work with you um, in developing that language. So, you know, I would anticipate on some of the more complicated ones, we'll probably have a meeting where the committee discusses it and lets us know, you know, almost like a study session at the council where you would give us direction as to what you would want to have included in a ballot measure. We'll then draft that proposed language, bring that to you, and then you can, you can modify it, revise it as you, as you wish. Okay. Thank you. And then, um, Ms. Gallagher, you and I had that this discussion earlier today about uh, Ms. Close's uh, request that we have examples of what a ballot measure looked like the last time. And I know you're collecting that and we'll get that to us. So that hasn't yeah. been forgotten. Example of what those that language ultimately looked like from the last charter for the ballot measures that were presented at that time. Yes, and thank you for, for that. Um, I had meant to mention that earlier, but yes, we are pulling those uh, prior ballot measures together that came out of prior um, committees. So. so if the committee is comfortable with that approach that we're starting with those three, staff is gonna be figuring out the order depending on what, what they need time-wise and we'll be getting us the materials you know, as quickly as possible. and. There may be materials that come later if it takes more than one meeting to do that. So, yeah, and I, I'm sure we're all in agreement that it would be only one thing that we would be looking at <laughs> with these heavy lifters but per yes. meeting. So, okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments before we move on? I am not seeing any, so I'm just trying to get to the back of my agenda. 
I don't believe we don't have any subcommittee reports. Or we don't have any written or electronic communications. And we just did the future agenda items. So with that, I think we can close our meeting and adjourn. And sure, oh. Cisco, may I just confirm? So next, our next meeting, we will have an item for the uh, principles, um, the equity principles. Um, we will, I will do a uh, primer on charter ordinances or resolutions, and then we will choose between these through these three items um, uh, as to which one goes forward uh, in that first week, at least to start the discussion on that item. That sounds it, good to me. <laughs> very good. Did I miss anything? Okay. Oh, we're really sure it's okay. <laughs> Great. Thank you. All right. Thanks again for all your time and your participation, and we'll see you on December 15th. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Cisco. <laughs> Bye.